Welcome to Stiefel's Sightlines podcast, focusing each week on a topic or two important to investors. Well, greetings and welcome to the Sightlines podcast. This is Michael O'Keefe, Stiefel's Chief Investment Officer. Hey, in this episode, I want to, uh, believe it or not, look past the election. You know, we're in election season just uh, uh, about a month away. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is we know the media especially is just in a f- its traditional frenzied coverage of what the heck's going on. And, you know, it's important. We'll, we'll see how things land. But, you know, I think it's also important to kind of take a step back and say, gosh, when we look past the election, what are some of the more serious medium to long term issues that will face investors as well as, you know, the next government, basically? And by the way, you know, our, our current base case is for divided government, meaning that uh, each party will win something, uh, which means getting anything done is going to be pretty darn challenging. And so um, anyway, let's jump into it. I, I want to run through, I think it's five specific uh, t- topics and kind of talk about it in the context of where we're headed and what, what our uh, new government's going to have to face. So the first, probably importantly, is military conflict. So it's been intense to watch, but basically, despite the U.S. calling for restraint, of course, we had Russia's invading Ukraine. We've had this Hamas, Hezbollah, Israel friction. So Israel's been increasingly aggressive, uh, understandably in a way, uh, and then Iran responding recently and firing on Israel. And so obviously this uh, almost like drumbeat of increasing military engagement um, is not good for the medium to longer term. And so it's really going to be up to the next administration uh, to engage with global leaders and try to de-escalate tensions uh, and maybe even find paths to peace, right? So anyway, military conflict. The next step is fiscal transition, which we've talked about a lot. This is the idea that increased rates and increased debt are troublesome across the economy, but I want to focus specifically on the U.S. government. So when we look on the, on the trajectory, uh, at the fiscal trajectory we're on, think of it as us having run deficits since the Great Recession. And, and by 2034, if we just look at it in about a decade, uh, the deficit's expected to be o- almost $3 trillion. Um, when we look at net interest payments, so the cost of that debt, it's expected to be, and these numbers are a little interesting, one-sixth of all federal spending, uh, one and a half times larger than the discretionary spending in the budget. And then since we're spending more than we're taking in, if we look at it as a percentage of our income, so tax income, for example, it's, it's going to be 23%, almost a quarter of... Uh, the all federal income is going to go towards the cost of the debt. And so, you know, our view is this is going to become increasingly a, a, an important focus in the, you, you know, call it the medium term at the latest. Uh, and and uh, we're on a trajectory that, in our view, is not really sustainable. Next up, U.S.-China competition. So we know that um, that's been in place for a long time. And we know China right now is forecast to surpass the U.S., as the world's largest economy uh, next decade, so in the 2030s. And so what does that mean? That means we're going to see in, in a sense of protectionism, uh, superpowers trying to protect their uh, resources, protect their people, uh, try to stay ahead. Uh, that means that uh, we're going to see really pitted competition in areas like technology and innovation, like artificial intelligence, and, and really, you know, trade negotiations, all that is going to be in keen focus for sure. Uh, so U.S.-China competition is in mind. Now, coming back to the U.S., um, uh, shifting demographics is another one. So we have a labor force that overall the participation rate is declining. So people are aging, all that. And just in round numbers, uh, participation sits at about 63% today. It's forecast to fall to 61%. The next number I have is nine years from now in 2023, uh, 2033, excuse me. And so, um, you know, the bottom line is we know we need to find ways to increase productivity to kind of offset that decline in participation. Basically, labor drives the economy. And so we need to see increases in productivity. Not, Not surprisingly, artificial intelligence will likely play a pretty important role in that. 
And speaking of that, then the digitization of our world, right? Everything's more and more and more digital. And we've got artificial intelligence growing. We've got uh, even, uh, you know, digital currencies. All of that takes resources. So think electricity. Electricity is expected to grow 2.4% uh, annually through 2030, for example. It's like ratcheting up the growth rate is faster than it's been in the past. And, um, and so that means, you know, we, we need, we're going to need to figure out how to sort of innovate to deliver uh, more power, uh, but keep costs down. And that'll, that'll be an, an interesting focus and things that are going to have to happen. And then as it relates to, you know, uh, other things, think something like batteries. So metals like lithium or materials, lithium, graphite, uh, cobalt, nickel, these are all things that are used for example, to produce batteries. And, um, and so that's an example of the kinds of uh, things that are going to be in demand. And we have just to make sure that we have the resources basically uh, to keep doing what we're doing in terms of the digitization of our world. And so uh, anyway, securing those resources, staying focused on our strategic resources and understanding more medium to long term, how we're going to deal with that, I think is super important. So listen, that's what we wanted to cover in this relatively quick episode. We we just think of it as it's so easy, especially with the media coverage, to stay really hyper focused on the very near term. In the current environment, that's the election, it's Fed cuts, it's whether we're going to head to a recession, and that's all really, really important. But it's also really uh, necessary in a way to look past all that and be looking out into the future identifying sort of the risks and opportunities that we see. So we, we just had a handful that we felt compelled to kind of jump into uh, in this episode. Anyway, thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again for listening to Stiefel's Sightlines. Be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to automatically receive each week's podcast in your feed.